Is it, is it, would it be possible to turn on the time? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay, thank you. It's okay. Thank you. Okay, first of all, I would like to uh, thank organizer for inviting me for this beautiful conference. For me, it's kind of a jubilee conference because the first time I was be able to go to the state, it was 89, to Santa Barbara conference where I met practically all main figures in quantum chaos, Oriol, uh, Gutzwiller, uh, Michael, and many uh, Ozoria. It was to me a starting point of this uh, chaos business. And uh, 30 years, quite a lot of time, it's uh, just change of generation, so it's not strange that new generation goes further, deviates further from quantum chaos. Still, quantum chaos somehow is the art of solving unsoluble problem. If the problem is soluble, you know what to do with it. But if you, you cannot solve it, what you should, at least how one can extract a kind of information from the problem which can be solved maybe numerically, but then computer can understand, but not you. So uh, I will s discuss today specific problems which is related to wave function. Wave function uh, is uh, somehow is a very basic fact of quantum mechanics. All quantum mechanics are is based on wave functions. But uh, not many investigations of wave function exist even today because the problem, main problem, how one can represent wave function. Wave function, what means that you have one dimension, two dimensional billet, you have function of two variables. If you have n body, problems, you have function of n times a number of variables and what, how one can do it, how one can treat it. It's even discrete system is, is like spin chain. If you have small number of spins, say uh, 20, you will practically impossible to represent wave function. And so you can compute eigenvalues and you know all uh, necessary conjecture about high excited eigenvalues. But High excited wave function is a quite elusive business because you have, for each eigenvalue, you have two power n variables for the spin chain. So how one can do it, and usually wave function is ignored or quite rea rarely discussed. Nevertheless, I would try to uh, convince you that for, uh, for many problems, there is a some kind of nice disc description, not fully understand. But uh, it's really important to use, to especially today when computer can compute much more than it was, say, 30 years ago. A quite big deal was done about spectral statistics, but wave functions are somehow put in a part. So what I will discuss, I will start with short introduction. Then I will discuss three different subjects, which somehow, in my mind, are interrelated. I will discuss multifractality of ground state, of spin chain, of, of, of both the, uh, models or something like this. And I will try to convince you that the ground state of practically of all models are multifractal. Then I will discuss another spin chain also, but now I jump to high exci excited states for spin chain. And for, for chaotic spin chain, you will see that uh, you can do the uh, very type conjecture for high, high excited states with very high precision. It means that even small details, even small deviation from numerics can be explained by a, a simply mind model. And uh, all spin chains, high excited states are extended. It means the trivial multifractal dimension, which I will discuss. But what is going in between is remains open question. No analytical tools which I am aware cannot be used in this in between. And the last subject which I will discuss, I will discuss fractality or multifractality in quantum billiards. Even for the stadium billiards, there is something interesting to say. And the most interesting fact for me is the pseudo-integral billiards, like uh, barrier billiards or triangular billiards, which uh, uh, will be interesting that they have non-trivial fractal dimensions. So uh, what is the high excited states? A main conjecture is a Berry conjecture, Berry model 
Berry model, which means that if you have eigenstates, it's a practically chaotic function. It's all you can be right as a superposition of elementary solution. And, and this has been written in Berry paper, 77. You have some of a big number of cosinus plane waves with the random uniformly distributed phases. And uh, G is a big, and in the end of the day, you will put G goes to infinity to remove everything. In particular, you can easily get a co co correlation function in two, f in two different points, and without any s s uh, surprise, it's just given by imaginary part of the free green function, which can be easily computed f from the, this expression. Just to illustrate this picture, I like this type of picture. It's a two pictures, really nodal domain for stadium billiard. If you look very carefully, you can see here uh, that the function is really zero on the billiard boundary. And this is a superposition of slightly modified Berry model of a, a Bessel function. And you see that without any thing, that they are extremely uh, similar. And so the Berry model is very good tool of discussion of high excited states, especially for low dimensional model. And uh, it's not proved. Anything of the big conjecture of quantum chaos can, cannot be proved in the full generality, maybe. But if it's non, not proved for any reasonably uh, mathematical model, still it works perfectly well. But uh, now we will do, do something else, and I will compute uh, some general dis discussion. If you have any function, say two-dimensional function, it's quite natural that you can expand it, it of the uh, um, basis set of orthogonal function, sinus, cosinus, basal, whatever you wish. It's up to you. The main point is how this coefficient depends of uh, vector nu in energy. And uh, the simplest, probably, the simplest possible question which you can ask, how many they are? How many there are coefficients uh, in, in, in this sum? To be precise, one should compute, say, moments with arbitrary q. It's a sum over power 2q, assuming that th these moments are normal, quadratic moments are normalized. And the central question of all which I will discuss later, how these moments grows with the total number of components. And uh, usually it grows as n power minus tau, which I, I will show you it. And uh, this dq is called generalized fractal dimensions. In particular, when you have uh, q equal 4, it's uh, called participation ratio. And participation in or inverse participation ratio, inverse participation ratio somehow give you how many gives you the value of uh, tot of total number of components. How many uh, com coefficients have a big in in this sum? Uh, this, of course, is very well known, and I just to repeat it for uh, com completeness. Uh, this is just arti artistic view of of certain wave function, maybe exact, maybe just artistic. And this is a, you see, you may have a, di a different behavior. You may have localized wave function where you have only a few peaks, and you may have delocalized wave function, but you have ma many peaks, and question is how many they are, how many these coefficients. And f for this, it's convenient way is called multifractal formalism, which means that you ask uh, what is the measure of uh, uh, by function squared where you have put some thing as n minus alpha uh, b bound here. You put n alpha and you compute the area which is above this uh, line. And uh, it's quite natural to assume that it's n power f alpha where f is a certain function of alpha and this is called singularity spectrum. And if you know this function, you you see that probability that psi squared is equal n minus alpha. It means that alpha equal log psi squared over n. And if you play a little, you see immediately that probability that you have a certain value of psi squared is log n f minus log n psi squared of log n. I 
No, 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 no. I don't know, it's not, in, it's not in this sense, it's not in harmonic. Okay, what is then? What is the number of typical of, um, of harmonics? It's not related with the states. It's a, formally, it's written for uh, n by n random matrices. So if you have n by n random matrices, you know, n, I can, you, know, you know what is n. For the quantum billiard, I will discuss that it's k, roughly speaking. It's, a, it's momentum will be. In two-dimensional model, it's momentum. How moments scaling with momentum. But till now, we just dis discuss this as simplest as possible. Also, it is a just the simplest possible. And if you, ha if you wish, you can say that it's number of states, because it's a, it's a, for metrics, it's a, the same as the number of eigenstates. But, but there is k. I will, c I will come in the end to, to this story, of course. There is no end, of course. But uh, it will not change anything except of the log n will be log k. It's not, it's anything. So if you, if you know this function, you can compute moments and you, one moment uh, settle point, it, you, you see that this integral will be n minus tau q and uh, tau q should be how one can compute numerically. You, you can do all cal 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 calculation of finite n, and n goes to infinity then. And this is the most weak point of all cal calculation. What to do? How one can extrapolate for, from finite n to n goes to infinity? And the, what, what was <laughs> discussed today by Giorgio, that say for regular, random regular graph, this is the main point. Both a group which he mentioned, compute fractal dimension from finite n, and they use, I think, 20,000 or even million n by n matrices. But how to do to n goes to infinity and all the different answer related of this method of extrapolation. So this is the most weak point, which I tried, if it's possible, to avoid in my discussion. But uh, to, to show analytical results to confirm this kind of uh, extra extrapolation. And uh, why it's so interesting? Because if it's localized, it's uh, evidence that dq is equal to zero. And if it's fully extended, dq equal one, if n is a total number of components. This is everything known. The, the simplest model of multifractality is called uh, binomial cascade. You, you take your two positive number equal one, and you divide your interval in two parts, two p's, and say, here you have a mass equal p, here the mass equal r. You divide each interval is mass p squared r. So all, every time you go in this direction, you put p, every time you go in this direction, you put r. And of course, you divide by the, the sum of them due to this relation is p. So it's consistent in every step. And then in the end of the day, you have infinite cascade and you have all intervals contains some mass. And the question is uh, how this mass is di are distributed. It's a nice, uh, uh, the simplest possible way is to, to put it binary code. If you go left, you put sigma equal one, zero right is sigma equal one. And you have two end possibility of, of, of two step cascade. So all your intervals are labeled by uh, n numbers, 0, 1. And uh, for each, uh, you can say that value of psi squared of, of mass of this integral is p n minus k r power k, and so on. And at the end of the day, you will see this type of, of, of picture. You have here 12 n, and there's some value of p of r, and you see this type of picture which has a peak in, in all scales. So if you amplify this region, you will see similar picture. You amplify everything, you will see similar picture. And of, of course, this model is very easy to analyze. And you can one line calculations to be sure that you can compute immediately uh, tau q and the fractal dimension. And they have a quite simple form. They have limiting case for q equal infinity. 
a limited case for QE for minus infinity, some line which connects of two of them with the special property of DQ, which are not interesting to you. Uh, why I told? Because uh, there are some spin chain where in special point it exactly binomial cascade for wave function. So I start with the it started finishing only for uh, quantum agent model. It's a spin chain of n spin of a very simple form, but uh, I have infinite many. I practically analyzed all known spin chain, and this result the same results, kind of qualitative results are the same. What is interesting of this model? First of all, it's integrable, so you can write energy. You can write also the ground state wave function. So psi squared of, gr of ground state is theorem is equal one half identical matrix minus sigma m. Sigma m is you remember that any uh, state of the expanded coefficient depends on n spin. So spin down is one, spin up is zero. So you have some kind of a very simply code as for binary cascade or for any other model. So you put diagonal matrix sigma n for this vector sigma, and this is the psi squared of a function. And orthogonal matrix is uh, easy to compute for this case. Unfortunately, maybe you know, there is no other formula for excited states. The model is integrable, but I'm not aware of any one calculation, like analytical, for excited state for agent model. It's integrable, but, but uh, by this jordan Wigner transformation, it's non-local. So wave function is elusive object. Only, to my knowledge, only ground state is known analytically. Do you know? It's soluble, but nobody, nobody but succeeded to solve with it. To present it as f formula for excited states is in a similar form. I challenge you to find this answer. But, yeah, but they exist, of course, this is not a problem. But it, this is important for me that I cannot control numerics for excited states. I can control numerics only for ground state models. So you do it in the, uh, then you do numerics and you are very happy because you have special points, you have lines similar to binomial cascade, and this is the psi uh, for this ground state for this particular value of lambda, and you see peaks in all scales, you, you do so something more, it see, and you will see peaks in slow scale. So the function looks uh, as binomial cascade, and they told you for XY models there are points where it's exactly binomial cascade, but here you have numerics. Numerics is always ambitious because you don't know clearly what do you compute, how to extrapolate from finite n. It's ex extrapolated numerics from finite n to infinite n. Why I interested in this particular model? Because here I know few, quite few limiting cases for this model. I can compute d infinity case. It means the line here. I can compute d minus infinity case and I can compute d one-half uh, for q equal one-half, so it's a modulus of wave function. And all uh, these uh, analytical results uh, coincide very well with my numerics. It's a numerics which has been done with Yasar, my student, and then uh, you see that points coincide, infinity and minus infinity are quite different points, so I can be pretty sure that fractal dimension does exist without big extrapolation procedure. This is a just analytical proof for all for, for this model. And all model which I consider, which I will not discuss today, I always try to find some points where analytical results are accessible. And then to check that it's correctly numerical results done. So to me, explanation why ground state is uh, multifractal, the simplest explanation somehow lie is a product matrix state history. You may know that uh, dynamical matrix renormalization group is one of the best methods of computing of low-lying states. And it works when uh, these states can be written in the matrix product states. In this simplest case, psi, it means that you have coefficients, 
coefficients, you have two power n coefficients, so you have a lot of coefficients, but you say, okay, I will approximate this unknown coefficient as a n matrices of n finite matrices. So you have much less number of independent harmonic here. And this is a called product matrix states where you approximate unknown coefficient by product of matrices and try to compute these matrices by dynamical matrix randomization group. And what I would like to state is that if, you, if your model is like this, then it's, uh, you can co prove that in general you have multifractal dimensions and it, it means proof that you don't need extrapolation for n goes to infinity. You, you just need a finite calculation to prove it. It's very, I just put one example, which is a, uh, it is some example from which this product matrix states appear. And it was old example of uh, applet lib kennedy tazaki model. This is a model of spin one, which is a linear quadratic. And uh, for this case, it's proved that ground state is product, matrix product states by two by two matrices. So you have three matrices. You have only a few coefficients. Uh, everything you can compute all coefficients in, 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 in this. And then it's just easy computation. You can compute asymptotic, you can compute even exact formula for all integer moments, but only integer. For half integer models, I don't know how to compute, but for all integer model, you can compute formula, and from there you can easily convince yourself that you, this model has fractal dimension, and all the it's a grievous numerics which you can do from uh, Maple numerics. It's really one minute calculation, uh, but it really exists, so you don't need to be take care very carefully of limiting n goes to infinity case. So it was, uh, and, th and this is works for all model which I am aware of. It to me, this matrix product state is the best explanation why you, do you have non-trivial fractal dimensions. But it's also checked for Bose-Hubbard model. For example, it's a Bose-Hubbard models for reasonably small or long L. Uh, for some calculations, and you see you have here uh, lines which are DQ finite line. Once more, I don't like to rely only on numerics, so uh, you can compute limiting case. You may say free bosons, limiting case who goes to the free boson, and if you play, play a little, you will see that ground state is like this, and then uh, to compute uh, Fractal dimension is nothing, it's just uh, some st st standard Stevian integrals, and you will get some non trivial answer, but it's non trivial but has no meaning because it's just imp important that it exists. Some, some function, non trivial function, does exist. You may compute for U goes to infinity, it's hard chord boson, so you need to compute psi as a modulus of, 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 of this Slater determinant. And, but you should compute discrete sum. Discrete sum can be computed numerically, of course, but if you do it continuous limit, then calculation is uh, straightforward because you know that this is a called uh, a Dyson integral, and a Dyson integral is famous, it has been computed, and you have explicit answer. So you know that for continuous limit, it really exists, and you can uh, compute all, all possible asymptotics. But for, for discrete case, uh, what is interesting for discrete case, because Godin has proved, I think it's 77 that, or 73, that uh, sp only special, that for special values, uh, coefficients can be computed exactly as for continuous case. So if K is uh, L, it's a number of uh, uh, states, uh, number of sites divided by N minus one, is an uh, integer all less than this, then all dk is exactly as for, conti for continuum model. And so for discrete model where you don't know analytical results, you can be sure that fractal dimension also exists because for sp special case, and uh, this is a for new equal one half, there is some, one of them is lying continuous models, some one of them is a, a discrete model numerically, but you in three points they coincide, so you pretty sure that they do exist and they do whatever you wish. So fractal dimension exists without uh, extrapolation to 
infinite n because you can compute them especially in special coins. Unfortunately, the story becomes more complicated for excited states. This is an example for some other but uh, I think model where you have uh, field alpha. Trans this model is not integrable except of special limit of alpha which scaling with n but it's not important. When you do numerics, you see that this is a ground states fractal, but this quantity. For finite n, of, of course, you can compute moments without problem. But this is a uh, ground state, and this is a first excited state. This is a second excited state. So for this model, you can easily imagine that the limit exists. And it really coincides with, with some kind of uh, which you wish. But what is do it for this model? You should extrapolate for large n, but for large n it should be somewhere here. And you don't know. Of course, you can do uh, blind car extrapolation by some simple formula, but you never know what is going even for the first excited state. And I told you I don't know any model spin where excited states were known analytically. So I cannot check anything, uh, even for simplest integrable model, uh, not to say that for non-integrable model. But you see the difference. Here you have very clearly convergence quite quickly, so you can be sure that it's converged. But what is here? But what is here? Is it will go here or it will go here? Nobody knows. And the uh, largest states also, you have some oscillation, but, it, but this is an effect of uh, at odd even. And, th and then they should converge somewhere to what quantity? One or 0 0.5 or 0 0.9, I, I cannot judge. So to me, it's not clear what is going on with the uh, excited states. It may be there is a smooth transition. I, I, what I will discuss later, that for uh, high excited states, you do have all uh, standard fractal dimension. D equal 1, is they all completely extended. As they are transition in between from in gra in ground state, for sure, are multifractal with non-trivial fractal dimension. As a transition, smooth crossover or some transition point, I cannot judge because uh, numerics, which is accessible, and I, I don't like rely on numerics uh, very strongly. So uh, what is also interesting, why this question may be interesting if you, I like this kind of thermodynamic analogy. Analogy is not a proof, but still it, it gives you some kind of insight what you think around. <laughs> I was <laughs> so quickly. I see. <laughs> so uh, let us, if you have a lattice gas, you may ask what is the free energy? It's a limit and goes to infinity. And for uh, main question, where this limit exists? Where the free energy exists? And the answer is known. If the interaction of local, then uh, lattice gas exists. Free energy exists. If it's a long tail, then free energy may not exist. The same story you may ask about fractal dimension for uh, uh, any model if you impose that psi squared is E minus E. Psi squared should be less than 1. So E is positive. It's perfect. You can call it energy. And then you see that analogy between this. Question is when fractal dimension exists. There is no answer, so conjecture which you can do for ground states that they exist when you have local interaction for fermion, boson, whatever you wish. And uh, my main message of the first part, the fractal dim dimension of all ground state, which I was aware and I do it for all possible spin chain and so on, they do exist and they are non-trivial. And this is quite universal phenomena which interesting to investigate and you need computer if you have no theory and uh, you need a good computer to be sure that extrapolation are correct. So now I jump to high excited states. So high excited states is a quantum agent model. Now I need to have non-integrable model because otherwise there is no theorem for excited states. And the uh, eigenfunction represent representation, you see here the coefficients uh, which I am interested in. Main question is how what to do it. And I will use a code of spin up, spin, spin down like this to describe what I wish. Uh, it's not too surprising that if you have 
some coefficients is a very erratic function of uh, energy. This is one coefficient choosing arbitrary for 17 spin, and you see how it depends of energy. There is no de clear dependence of energy. Still, you see some overall trend. So I divide it in four ad different parts, and you compute the, say, distribution in each part, and you see the distribution in each part is quite nicely described by Gaussian function, which is not surprising if you take into account Berry conjecture for billiards that it's a Gaussian function, but Gaussian function is determined only for one quantity, for real or complex, not important. It's so th you need another conjecture about this quantity. To compute it, standard way to computation is to do strength function. You compute this function and ask, if you know this function, you know everything. Uh, so if you know what is the importance of this function, because if it, it gives you exact summer rules. This quantity you can compute from the initial states without calculation. You put n, you compute your Hamiltonian trace in, in this subspace, and you are happy because you know this quantity. Question is, what is this function? I don't know general results, but it looks that at least for sigma model, I have compute four moments. Uh, they all agree with the G Gaussian distribution. So this function is quickly function decaying from energy, mean energy, and in, in sigma is a variance of, of this model, which can be computed easily. I will show you exactly the result. And if you know, you can compute every, everything you wish, whatever with all possible precision you wish. And uh, for the quantum Eisen model, if the calculation is simple, first moment is, of, of course, mean energy, and U is number of spin up. Second moment is also can be easily compute. You can compute sort cumulant. It, it requires some uh, calculation. You can compute force cumulant, but then exact formula becomes uh, nasty. But you can check that for s f four moments, they agree that they the function is a Gaussian function because the end dependence is a, as it should be for Gaussian dependence. And you can compute, say that you know this P of n, it's a, it's a Gaussian function with computing these two moments, and you can co co correct it for the higher moments if you wish more precision. It is the standard way of writing so Hermit polynomials, the correction. And you do, and you are happy, you can compute the density of states, is a sum of binomial coefficient. And you see that if you do not put uh, higher order moments, you see the curve is a dashed line. And this is numerics for, for this value of spin. But it, 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 it has, if you compute or even this third moment, you see that the, car, 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 the difference with particularly disappear for this particular number of spin. So you have n power. Uh, two power, roughly speaking, 17 divided by 17 because it's a, a, a zero moment sector, which I will maybe discuss, maybe not. Okay, I, but uh, I just show you that it is a sum. It's not a one Gaussian, it's a sum of Gaussian. And I d it's not by chance that I put here alpha lambda of the same order. If you put slightly a different value alpha 1, but lambda is 0, 3, 0, 5, you see that you have multi-peak multi contribution. A red line is numerics, a black line is a sum of the Gaussian, which I showed you before. And even for lambda equals 0, 7, you see many peaks. And this is also, these peaks, of course, is related with quasi-degeneracy, but it's not important. Important that you can compute for all practically model which we can compute if you do not take carefully looking for uh, what region you will have. You will have a density of, of states quite complicated, and so all property will be quite different from the property which you can compute from uh, that model. Then there is some correction, which I probably have no time to, to discuss, another type of correction, which uh, when you compute uh, model in the with finite translational momentum. If you have periodic boundary condition, you have invar invariance of the moment. If the moment and also inversion, and it's always the people have used it because it did decrease your numerical basis. If you know the basis, if you construct function in the 
basis with the pitch k, your matrix becomes n times, roughly speaking, less. There is an exact formula, but it's not important. So, which is a, say, for n equal 20, to be 20 times less matrices is quite a, a big numerical calculation. So you can compute, but if you do it, you see that coefficients are complex, not real in general, but complex. So you, you need a complex Gaussian to describe them, but the statistic is, is still GOE because you have uh, symmetry due to inversion. It is a standard truque. But important also for co corrections that there are two terms. There are real terms, a, a, a complex coefficient. So in, in, in the corrections, you can do it. And in the end of the, the day, you can construct. Uh, but really, complex <laughs> has a different coefficients. So you should construct co corrected formula. And corrected formula it gives you very nice agreement with all numerics, which you can produce. It, at least in this, in this center of the spectrum. I remind you that somewhere close to the boundary you should have multifactor, so all formula will fail, but I don't know is a smooth transition or crossover or something like this. So th th this is a just the uh, second part, is the last part which I would like to stress for East Africa. eight, nine minutes. Okay, okay so what is going for quantum billiard? For quantum billiard, as uh, Pasha said, there is no k, but uh, there is no n. But you can easily convince yourself that at least for two-dimensional billiard, n is k. So the question is how moments scale with energy, with the momenta. Is a power, some power, dq, and dq will call fractal dimension. I will discuss two models very shortly. One of them standard stadium model, a second is the barrier model. Barrier billiard. It means that here you have Dirichlet, 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 and here you have Neumann boundary condition. It belongs to a quasi pseudo integrable system which, which has un unusual spectral statistics, which has unusual all properties. Wh why is interesting? Because uh, there is some general relation, some general philosophy which I ca cannot discuss here, that if you have number variance which grows some kind of with non trivial coefficient with L the correctly de defined number variance, uh, this coefficient is, is called compressibility. You can easily convince that for random matrix, compressibility is zero, for Poisson, compressibility is one. So in any time where you have non-trivial compressibility, it means between zero and one, and without equal, then you have fractal dimension of wave function. It's not a theorem, it, it can be checked for perturbation theory, quite large order, and also from numerics for some models. Uh, but uh, to my knowledge, if you have non-trivial compressibility, you should have non-trivial fractal dimension of, of wave function. So we have some formulas, but I did not discuss it. For barrier billiard, which I mentioned, you can compute easily as one half. For right triangular billiard with angle pi over n, this belongs to so-called Vich billiard, where you can compute all periodic orbits. For all, all other billiards, if, if you have n not angle but right triangle with all not angle, you will not compute anything because you are not aware how to compute periodic orbits. But if you compute, you, you have some formula. It's quite a simple formula, but it's a result of negative curvature calculation. It's not important for you, but it's non-trivial fractal dimension. So for all this model, you should have non-trivial fractal dimension. Just example of expansion. What is fractal dimension is uh, you expand it in the special set of function and you compute sum of coefficient. If fractal dimension is a Fourier space, not in real space. In real space, you don't see anything interesting for this property because psi everywhere uh, equal distributed. But for barrier billiard for 10,000 energy, you see you can say typical by function. You have many peaks. For this stadium with the close energy, you have also peaks, but the peaks are mu much higher. The existence of uh, big peaks in it quasi integrable model is related somehow with the super scar, and this is a one model which you can predict super scar, and you, you can predict this energy uh, uh, really very well from parameter of super scar. And if you do for this particular wave function calculation, you see very large peak, which I know all coefficients of. Of, of this large peak is easy, to, is can be, it can be computed. 
So you see the quantitative ad a difference for this. And, uh, but even f for this stadium model, you should do some kind of uh, equilibristic to compute something. Because you now put mn. mn is kind of sinus m x sinus n y in one direction. So the energy is not equal k squared. So you cannot apply Berry model directly to this uh, computation of overlap because it depends on energy of all the men. But uh, it looks that distribution of overlap even for stadium and billiard will be Gaussian as Berry, but here you have non trivial uh, variance. And non trivial variance is somehow uh, have this form, you have special standard function, F minus energy divided by K. And if you compute this function uh, for this particular study on billiard, you see you can compute it numerically easily. It's not, it, it, it is exact somehow calculation, it's not uh, asymptotic, it's, it, it does not depend on energy, but this is a, some kind of function, and if you do it, you can see that fractal dimension is very simple, is ddq equal one, and you everything consistent that models in uh, K in the uh, first stadium billiard is completely extended in both in the x space and the k space. And this is uh, some numerics uh, for, for a few minutes for barrier billiard and the stadium. Barrier, it's a numerics for participation ratio, inverse part participation ratio. So it's inverse of the force power moment for all energy in, in this interval. And you can compute whatever you wish. And, you, and then you need to have extrapolation because uh, this calculation is old one. Where is it? Uh, and you see that from stadium, you easily see that extrapolation of k is k. But for barrier billiard, if you do all calculation, is the square root of k. For participation ratio, for the sort participation ratio, is linear with k. And if you compute seriously this model, seriously means that I extrapolate here as it is. I have no idea, but I, I, I have uh, some theory why it's uh, uh, dq is equal one half, which I will be very easy, very fortunately I have no time to discuss it, but you can uh, compute which are super scars, the scars which are going in the periodic orbit channel and every characteristic of it can be computed and has been checked for many a, a different shape, it's just few examples of scars of uh, some numbers which are not important, and you see that it's a 10,000 levels. It's a really high excited state, and uh, you, you see clearly picture which you can do explain by simple formulas. So distribution of the, the peaks you can describe, unfortunately I will be too, too quickly because I have no time, but important that overlap. This is overlap of scars with the exact wave function. It has distribution as a Lorentz function, which is a typical for uh, uh, short perturb small perturbation. Important here that this function is non-trivial, can contain zeta is one half, which can be computed by, by different methods. And if you know it, you can argue that in the end of the day, you will have fractal dimension for barrier billiard dq equal one half, because some kind of analogy with rosenfeld porter model, which will be discussed by uh, Martin today. So, conclusion. So, interesting quantity. There is a fra multifractal dimension for quantum billiard. To my knowledge, it's practically not explored. No, no numerics which I'm aware of can be done. For st even for this study on billiard, I hope that it can be done, and I will speak with Barbara because she had a lot of numeric ca calculation. But important, the most interesting case is the integrable model. So the integrable model is a co completely different class of models which has non extremely non-trivial spectral statistics which are not described by normal random metrics metri exact, but it's a correct statistic. And uh, numerically, which I can do it in some analytical arguments, which I did, did not completely finish in this analytical calculation. So dq for barrier billet is a 0.5 for all cube bigger than one half. But for all triangular billiards, especially for beach billiards, which I have in mind, say a right triangle with pi over n, you can do Fourier transformation into this spectral dimension. It's not explored. It's not explored. 
in my group because uh, the guy who do calculations, Sharish Schmidt, died, you know, one can reproduce large-scale calculation, but to, to today computer can be done, and I ask uh, people who, c who have a lot of computation power and compute to compute numerically this uh, fractal dimension because they open the way to some new business in this field. Thank you very much. So, uh, do we have any questions? As you well explained in the beginning, the eigenfunctions uh, do not have this property like the eigenvalues, which are invariant under 